you so much. Uh, just also to know, uh, we are just uh, recording a session uh, that we can share with you uh, if you so wish to have it afterwards. Let's get started. Actually, for actually for what I'm doing, there we go. Um, so I've put together an, uh, an agenda for the discussion today, uh, just to sort of help us guide us through what we'll be talking about. So firstly, um, setting the sort of status, just going a little bit into detail about what we've all experienced. Obviously, I don't need to mention too much here because unfortunately we are all too uh, aware of what's going on. Uh, but I will also be mentioning some of the financial impact that, that we have uh, been experiencing and, and will continue to experience. Um, based on that, uh, we have some solutions that we've worked uh, with other companies and other labs uh, to implement to make sure that they're handling the situation as optimally as possible. Uh, following that, we have Bucket and the Science Marketplace, which is areas that I work on at Custom Market, just going into some demonstrations, talking about what they can do um, and highlighting sort of benefits of them. Uh, following that, I'm going to put uh, money where our mouth is and uh, show you uh, some examples for labs that have actually implemented um, Bucket and the Science Marketplace and how that's benefited them. And then finally, I uh, should have lots of time for Q&A and discussion at the end. Uh, so roughly, this should take us around half an hour, um, but uh, let's just go through and see what happens, shall we? So, uh, slightly intense slide to start on. Uh, I do apologise for that. But I think it's important that we uh, sort of have uh, an understanding of what's going on. Unfortunately, uh, COVID has been happening for uh, such a long time now that uh, we are sort of getting in uh, this sort of aspect where we're a bit too used to it. Um, the situation is that COVID is very much a problem still. Uh, both from a health perspective and also an economic perspective. Uh, these are newspaper articles uh, from the last uh, month or so. Uh, so still, it's, it's a very massive problem for us, um, but we are sort of, uh, sort of going in with this idea that we're getting used to it. Um, so I just wanted to show you this uh, to have it in the back of your head as some background information. So um, hopefully this is a relatively unprecedented thing that you experience at the moment. Um, obviously, there are differences between countries um, that who have um, sorry, there are differences between countries uh, and the implications of COVID. But generally, what they were seeing is that there were some restrictions, both in the work perspective and also public areas. Some countries, public areas were completely closed up until uh, a few months ago. Uh, likewise, people were advised to stay at home. As this again was encouraged in some places and strongly suggested in others. Uh, one of the main things implemented almost worldwide and uh, almost immediately and has been accepted uh, by most people is physical distancing. It's very easy to do uh, and most people had uh, adhered to that. Unfortunately, because of all these above points, what we are seeing is that uh, there's a lot of this general sense of job insecurity and uh, stress also because uh, of uh, the job insecurity and um, uh, just the unknown of, of, of COVID. Uh, next slide. Uh, obviously, we want to focus uh, for this talk, want to focus more on scientific labs. Um, again, this did vary from country to country, but most of them did experience amended working conditions, that being either uh, that um, they had experienced full closure of the labs or that um, they had reduced uh, working capacities, uh, so much so that some people actually just had to close because they didn't uh, couldn't run the lab on one person. Um, because of this, a lot of places did experience delays in delivery of company projects, um, just because they didn't have the people in uh, to do the work, um, and also uh, because of the, the, the funding. Because people had amended working conditions and uh, they weren't able to come in and work in a team that they potentially were used to, uh, innovation just generally slowed. They weren't able to bounce ideas off each other. Um, and that meant that um, there's a lot of financial repercussions uh, heavily due to, uh, again, the delays in, in company projects. Uh, more on the financial repercussions on a global scale. So what we are seeing globally is a, a decrease uh, in economic activity, um, mainly uh, due to uh, well, COVID and also the implications of, of the labs and, and the work that people were, were doing. Uh, what we were seeing again, as I mentioned, closure, closure sorry, of scientific labs 
uh, again, because they just couldn't keep up um, with uh, the work that they were doing uh, based on the amount of people that were allowed in the lab, or they were told to close because the research, unfortunately, that they were doing wasn't seen as a priority, and uh, the government just told them that they had to close. Now, because of uh, the above, it has been estimated that it can take up for a year for research to return to normal, and that is based on assuming that the lab is at an optimum level again. So really what we're seeing is that research has taken a massive hit here uh, and it's going to take a long time for, for it to, to recover. Um, there is a lot of discussion uh, amongst uh, financial experts uh, about the long and short term impact of uh, COVID. Um, they all do agree that unfortunately there are a lot of countries that are heading towards a recession, the UK being one of them. But the uh, ultimate impact, that being long or short term, is up for discussion. I think the most important thing to take away from this is that there is an impact and that you need to uh, deal with the situation that is currently you're facing right now rather than wait for it to, to, to solve itself. Um, mainly, don't wait for the government to fix this for you. To implement steps now so that you can continue to work in your lab and continue with the research that you are doing, even if it is at a slightly reduced capacity, because what you don't want to do is wait for the situation to rectify itself and then um, you're months down the line and, and nothing is, is, is still happening. Luckily, uh, we've done a lot of work with facilities in the last few months. Um, which has been very interesting and these are some of the things that we have uh, sort of implemented for facilities uh, and for labs so that they can continue working in a very safe way um, and continue the research. Um, one of the main things to do is implement physical distancing uh, at work. Um, most people want to abide to this because like I mentioned this was one of the things that we and, and they want to be able to do that uh, in, in, in a working capacity as well. So making sure that they feel safe and that they can come into to work and do that, uh, still uh, do work and having physical distancing. Um, this one, the next one's a little bit tricky uh, because you want you do want to make sure that your health and safety has been updated, but um, the government doesn't necessarily always agree on the correct rules, and it does vary from country to country. But what you want to try is to make sure that. Um, you've got you are up to date on anything that would impact the way that you can work within the lab. Um, you also want to, uh, uh, with allowing physical distancing, you want to control and reduce the amount of people that are in your facility because uh, you just can't have too many people in the facility anymore because that won't uh, enable physical distancing and um, it's uh, against government regulations, particularly in in the UK. Um, got to remember that a lot of people have been working from home for a very long time so you want to make sure that everyone is aware of any updates for the lab also it's a really good way of ensuring that that the sense of team is still there and that people are working together and the community is still um, pushing forward um, the point there is uh, probably the most difficult and the most harsh one to do but it really is absolutely so important that you do it. Uh, you really have to uh, reevaluate your priorities. Um, is the work that you can push forward? Is the work that can wait? Um, it can seem unfair, but really it is for the benefit of your lab and also the company that um, you're, you're working in. If you can really uh, have a serious conversation regarding your priorities and see what you can forward and what can wait. Um, so that you're not at the end of it trying to catch up with all your work or uh, going to get more uh, financial repercussions because you've been waiting and waiting to do work that um, you could have done something else in, in the meantime. So uh, what I want to show you now is uh, our systems and uh, how they're helping facilities and, and labs and companies uh, to continue working during this, uh, this rather strange time. Uh, so this is uh, Bricket. This is our lab management system uh, that you can see in front of you is what, is what it looks like. It's a very easy, simple way of having a fantastic overview of what's going on within your facility, a good overview of the equipment, what you use, who's using it, and you can also see who's in the facility as well. I get very simple, uh, elegant overview. The benefit of Bicket is that it is 100% online, means that you don't have to have a computer, a dedicated computer. You can log on to it at home, book the equipment that you need, and then go into the facility that you're working at and use it. So you're not having to, to go into your facility to book on the equipment that you're using in, in a few days' time. 
again, we're really uh, implementing this, uh, managing the amount of people you have within uh, your lab at any given time. So what you can do is you can assign schedules, to make sure you never have too many people uh, in, in the lab. So what you, as an example, if you split your lab into two groups, you can allow group uh, one to have access on Mondays and Wednesdays, group two to have access on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and then everyone can have Friday off. Um, next, you want to do is upload uh, your SOPs and your safety guidelines. Again, you just want to have a unified place where people can uh, access this equipment, or sorry, uh, this information, particularly when it comes to safety guidelines. Uh, again, as a reminder, a lot of people have been stuck at home and they're coming into the facility and suddenly they've got new rules, they've got new exits and entries. So you want to make sure that everyone is, is aware of it. Uh, and the way that you can do that is by through the communication uh, or the announcements feature that we have on uh, the platform. Really good way of making sure that everyone is aware of what's going on within in the facility or in your lab. So if you have um, equipment that has to go for maintenance or the lab has to shut down for whatever reason, you can use the announcements feature to make sure that they're all getting the same information at the same time. And again, it's a really good way of making sure that that sort of team uh, and unified feeling is still, is still implemented in your facility. And then finally, you've got a, a way of um, doing project reports just making sure um, that, or sorry, running reports so you can see equipment utilization, you can uh, see um, what groups have been working together, um, and it's a, a, again a really good way just to monitor what's happening uh, within, uh, within the facility. Next, we have um, the Science Marketplace, and that is a, an online uh, platform which is aligned or uh, connected uh, with Bricket, and it just is a way of uh, getting access lots of uh, equipment that you wouldn't necessarily have readily available within uh, your facility. Um, you can um, get lots of equipment on demand, equipment that you wouldn't necessarily have. With it does give you the opportunity to showcase some of your equipment. So if you have equipment that you aren't utilizing within your own lab, you can put them into uh, the marketplace and allow other people to you can generate some passive income uh, and uh, potentially uh, funnel that money back into another project or uh, buy a, a new piece of equipment that you need. And uh, a really huge benefit to really truly embracing resource sharing is that you get to collaborate with other colleagues that can be either in a different lab to you or in a completely different facility or, or even in, in a different uh, country. So I did promise you I had some examples, uh, I think, to just to demonstrate um, that this is being implemented uh, by uh, facilities um, and, and, and companies and how they're using it so that they can, again, uh, continue to work really safely uh, during uh, that time. So um, in example, uh, we have a large facility that is, uh, or a large company rather, that is separated over multiple locations and what they need to do uh, they needed to roll uh, access to equipment because they had some sensitive equipment and they didn't want everyone to have access to it. So firstly what we did uh, is that we implemented uh, booking rules or groups and it meant that we could control the equipment uh, they have access to, control when they have access, they can control um, if they need to request permission uh, to get access and again really good way of managing um, the within the facility and whoever is in uh, the groups as you can see up here um, uh, they have to abide by by those rules next what we did is we sorted the equipment they had within their facility so they had some lab uh, sections just sort of separated out and created rooms for them so uh, on the slide you can see in room uh, 158 you have five pieces of equipment and it just meant that you can never have more than five people in room 158 at any given time. So again, uh, really managing the access and allowing physical distancing uh, to be implemented. Uh, and then on uh, the far right here you can see uh, what we did is we allowed access across companies uh, or across the labs in different locations. So you had uh, labs in London, I had access to the equipment that has uh, um, in Boston and, and Cambridge and I think one in Germany as well. 
and it just meant that they had better they had better overview of what was going on in the company overall and it allowed uh, people who worked in different labs to communicate and work together um, really supporting the innovation and the projects that they were they were working on so like I said uh, this was a uh, cancer research company. They needed to manage their lab space, which you can see that we did that here. Uh, we separated it into sections on the facility. Um, it meant that uh, people didn't have to hang around. They could just go directly to, to the section. Um, and uh, one of the issues that they did have was that two of the pieces of equipment, they couldn't be separated far enough away from each other. Um, so what we did is we implemented uh, booking times. So uh, what we did is one of the pieces of equipment was available uh, in the morning on Mondays and in the afternoon on Tuesdays. And then the, the other uh, piece of equipment was available on the opposite. Uh, and it just meant that um, they had time uh, to also clean down the system as, as well as there was an hour in between. And uh, the company is still uh, up and running and it's still fully allowed to work. Um, because they've implemented this system and they can demonstrate that they have uh, their um, they can work in, in a safe in a safe manner, which is brilliant. Final example. Um, so this is a, a CRO in the UK, and what they were experiencing due to COVID was a lot of uh, new requests were coming in, uh, which was really good for them. But uh, the difficulty is that there was too much admin for them. So even though they could uh, potentially support the request in the lab, they couldn't support the request uh, on the admin side because it was too much. They had too many different documents, too many different contracts, too much negotiation was happening, and they needed a way to, to unify this for them. Because they were having to say no uh, to so many people, they needed to show to their investors that they were having still a, a yearly uh, increase in, in yearly growth. And uh, also through conversations that we had with them, they had, uh, we identified that they had a lot of equipment, but the lab was relatively small and uh, a little bit messy. So we needed a way to sort of um, help them make that work a little bit, uh, a little bit better. So what they did is they implemented a cluster market or, or the uh, science marketplace. And even though if requests were coming to them directly, they directed them to go through uh, our site. And it meant that um, all everyone within their facility had access and an overview of, of what was happening. Um, and they could see um, everything was more unified. So uh, there was no more contract negotiations. Everything was on a standard um, uh, contract. Um, and just because we did that, they were able to support a lot more requests and automatically that increased the yearly growth. But like with any company, they wanted to increase the yearly growth even more. Um, so what we did for them is we did some monthly marketing support, which we are actually still doing, just to showcase um, some of the work that they can, they can do and provide support for people who need it. And then uh, they implemented uh, Bookit, which is our lab management system, which I showed you, uh, just to provide more internal support. It's a really good overview. They could see what equipment was being used, by whom, and for what project. And uh, it just really supported all the admin that they were doing. Uh, so uh, just to throw some numbers at you, uh, last time I checked, they had three requests, and the current value of those requests were uh, just under £20,000. So uh, last, uh, last slide, um, main thing to take away from here is to uh, plan ahead. Don't wait for things to solve itself. Adapt to the situation that you're currently facing um, and, and make it work for you. So uh, like I said earlier, really, really reflect on the priorities that you have within uh, your, your team at the moment. Is the work that can wait, is the, is the work that we can push forward. Make sure everything is streamlined to optimize. Um, so much money is wasted uh, when things aren't organized and, and systematic, even in the lab and also outside the lab. So you want to make sure that you try and optimize as much as possible. Again, you want to upload um, and make sure everyone is aware of SOPs or pictures and safety guidelines, um, just to make sure if they come into the lab, uh, they know um, any new rules and regulations uh, that, uh, that they need to abide by. And uh, I strongly uh, encourage you to implement a booking system and really truly embrace resource sharing. It can really only be hugely beneficial for you, um, for you all. So that is it. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. I do apologize for the minor hiccup that we had, but um, such as life sometimes. <laughs>